Hi, Rob B here. We're Rob D and we're from Property Hub. And we're going to be talking about one of the most popular books with property investors. It's called Rich Dad Poor Dad. It's got some fantastic lessons you need to know about, but it's also got some pretty dubious advice. We're going to talk you through all of that right now. So in essence, this book focuses on the importance of financial independence and financial freedom. And it also talks about why it's so important that you should build on your own financial IQ for you to be financially successful. And in this story, Robert Kiyosaki talks about a rich dad and a poor dad. And it's about their mentality and how they conduct themselves with finances. So his poor dad believes that you should work for money. You get a job and you stay in that job. Whereas the rich dad advises Robert Kiyosaki to get a job, but to learn skills so he can be more successful as an investor or an entrepreneur. And wealth comes from experience-based learning and then eventually multiple streams of income. And the reason why it's so loved by property investors is property investment can be one of those multiple streams of income. So let's get into some of the lessons we consider to be the most important points that this book makes. The first of those is be in control of your finances. Your employer or the government will not. So this is the start of the reprogramming, really. I think a lot of people have this vague sense that if you get a job, then your employer will look out for you. It's steady, it's safe, and then later in life, you'll be taken care of by the government. And it's about taking responsibility and reprogramming the way you think around money. One of the things that his rich dad said to him is you should never say, I can't afford it. When you say, I can't afford it, that shuts down your creativity. Instead, you should change that into a question and ask, how can I afford it? Because then it presupposes that there is an answer and you just have to find it. So it gets you thinking about what you could do instead. Another thing that Robert Kiyosaki talks about a lot is the rat race. And basically that's the corporate ladder, if you like. Being in work and chasing another promotion and then believing once you get this thing in in your work life, you'll then be happy is wrong. And I agree with him, it is wrong. If you think another promotion, another pay rise is then going to equal happiness, it's not. If you can't find happiness in what you do day to day now in work, chances are you never will if you carry on on the same path you're on. For some people, their passion may be in an industry that doesn't pay very well. So having the passive income that Robert Kiyosaki talks about is so important. And passive income is talked about a lot in property, but really this is the first place that most people hear about passive income. The next lesson that we think is really important that everyone absorbs from this book is the concept of good debt versus bad debt. For those who are completely new to this, the concept of any debt being good is a a strange one. But actually, if you can take on a debt that allows you to buy an asset that then pays you more than the debt repayments itself, then that is a good debt. In property investment, we often call that a mortgage. So you will get a buy-to-let mortgage. You may have to pay back £200 a month. But if your rent is £450 a month, as long as your costs aren't too high, then that is a good debt. That is something worthwhile doing. A bad debt is taking a loan to buy a car or go on holiday. You may enjoy what that debt gives you, but then the only things you own from that point on are a memory or something that's sitting on your driveway that's depreciating in value over time and costing you money to run it. Now, another lesson of the book teaches you is the concept of not splashing out on luxuries when you're not in a financial position to do so and that you should build up your passive income that then allows you to go and buy these luxuries and goods but do it that way around and rob this relates to the concept of paying yourself first which is another controversial point in rich dad poor dad i don't fully buy into this lesson i think a watered down version of paying yourself first is the right way to go. But Robert Kiyosaki takes it a lot further. He does, and you're not the only one. I've spoken to a few people who've had a problem with this idea of paying yourself first, because it does sound a bit mad at first. So here's a quote defining pay yourself first. It says, in order to be rich, you must have the self-discipline to pay yourself first. By this, I simply mean using your income to invest in cash flowing assets before you pay your bills or buy anything fun. This in turn will create more income that you can use to invest in more assets. Paying yourself first is not easy. In fact, it can be scary, especially when the bills are piling up, but you must develop the self-discipline to do it. Now, worded like that, it does sound pretty insane, but you mentioned a watered down version, Rob, and I think that makes a lot of sense because the concept of putting investments first makes lots of sense. The mistake that most people make is investing what's left over. 
and there's very rarely anything left over. This is flipping it and saying that you have to put investments first. That's your number one priority. Everything else comes later. So that's something we don't fully agree with in the book. But you can take something from it. But Rob, there are some things that we just don't agree with at all. And one of those things in the book that Robert Kiyosaki talks about a lot is just these amazing deals that seem to drop on his lap and he expects everyone else to be able to do and deliver as well. It's unrealistic at best and possibly for most people a bit of a fantasy. Yeah, this is where I start to have a real problem with Rich Dad Poor Dad. So here's a quote from the book describing one of the deals that Robert supposedly did. He says, Instead of shopping with local real estate agents, I began shopping at the courthouse steps. In these places, a $75,000 house could sometimes be bought for $20,000 or less. For $2,000, which was loaned to me for a friend in exchange for $200, I gave an attorney a cashier's check as a down payment. While the acquisition was being processed, I ran an ad advertising a $75,000 house for only $60,000 with no money down. The phone rang hard and heavy and the house sold in a few minutes. I asked for a $2,500 processing fee, which I used to return the $2,000 to my friend with his additional $200. In the end, $40,000 was created in my asset column. Total working time, five hours. (laughs) Rob, we've been doing it wrong. (laughs) Clearly. (laughs) (laughs) Do one of these a day and we're sorted. So if you come away from this book going, ah, well, all I need to do is put five hours aside so I can create $40,000 using one of these deals that's around, you're just going to be completely disappointed. And that really links on to another thing about the book, which we really don't like, which is the fact that a whole seminar industry has been built around his book and his brand. So not so much in the book itself, but now the brand Rich Dad Poor Dad and how it's used. Because you will see Rich Dad Poor Dad advertised on the internet, especially if you've done anything property related. You may see Rich Dad Poor Dad taster courses for a couple of hours for free. And if you think, well, actually, if this is going to be a course about the book and really building on the lessons in the book, then fantastic. But it's not. It's a sales funnel. And that sales funnel doesn't stop there. In that two hour course, they then sell you into a weekend course. In that weekend course, they then sell you into a more expensive course again. And it goes on. Before you know it, you've invested five figure sums, serious amounts of cash into just learning about how to be creating cash. Now, that is a great business for the people who are selling the product. But for people who want to learn about property investment, there are lots of ways you can learn for free or little money. And the real learning will come from investing. So instead of spending 10, 20 grand on courses, spend 10, 20 grand on getting your first property investment and you'll learn so much more. So lots to take from this book, good and bad. What are your takeaways? Let us know in the comments. Absolutely, and after you've made a comment, hit that subscribe button and that lovely looking bell and you can make sure you get all our videos moving forward.